what you need to have you, girl. Want you to know I really adore you. All the people who know what's going on. <laughs> Look at your man. Help me sing my song. Tell him I'm your man. You're my girl. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell it to the whole wild world. Ladies say I'm, I'm your girl. girl. Hey. You're my, my man. man. Uh-huh. Promise to love you the best I can. Said I've been, been there, there, done it, humped around. <laughs> After all that, <laughs> this is what I found. Uh -huh. Every one of y'all are just like me. It's too bad that you can't see that you got it bad. <laughs> I was waiting. I was like, no, oh, no, no. Uh, 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 hey, hell no. I got, a, <laughs> I got a tickle right before. Nope. Uh -uh. I was like, here, ready? And hi. Huh. Well, that was nice. Yay. Indeed. <laughs> Everybody, I felt like you really knew that one, so you was really trying yeah. to sing the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? I got redemption every once in a while. <laughs> Let me get my moments. Ah, oh, man. How you guys feeling? I'm okay. Yeah. Doing good. 2020. 2020. How's 2020 treating you so far? <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah, That's pretty great, right? Yeah. That's pretty great. Some of my 2019 problems are coming back. Fuck. Like? Uh, I don't want to speak about it. Hypertension. Uh, heartburn. <laughs> indigestion. The police and diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, let's talk about some real shit. Uh, the police and diabetes. They will find you. Y you know, it's crazy. Trying to beat me with the diabetes. <laughs> I, watched, um, I watched the video that I did back in 2000. Nine, you know how I always recap my year. Mm -hmm. That 2009, mm -hmm. we were shooting High School Sucks the Musical. Mm -hmm. um, I was with my ex. Mm -hmm. I just got fired from California Pizza Kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, I was still living at home with my family. A lot of shit changes in 10 years. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. kind of crazy. That's the only reason I will ever regret not being a vlogger. Uh. I don't remember shit. <laughs> I know. I just try to think about. I was like, "Where? Um, what was I doing?" Back in two thousand nine, ten years ago, Nikki Blaze, what I were you doing? Know. What being twenty one? Twenty one. Being twenty one. So you were. I was. I got my. Actually, um, I got my first club job three days after my twenty first birthday, and I just saw the person that hired me out the other night, and it was oh. super funny. They came up, they showed love, and I was Tony like, Clive. Who? Mm -mm. Tonic Live, Anthony Tonic Oh, no. Oh, my God. By the way, I grew up in the Valley, so I wasn't even in the Bay. I have no idea about, like, uh, Anthony Presents now. That's what he goes by. Tony Clive. Tony Clive. Yeah, so, I mean, what was I doing? Turning up, being a ratchet, making mistakes, being an asshole. I mean, uh, that's doing, what you supposed to do. You know what I mean? I was literally wearing, like, I have an iced out Hello Kitty chain. Uh, I wore that with oh a tiara. Yeah, I had a tiara. a tiara. Yes, I was like, it's my birthday, bitch, in my BB oh. dress. Oh, I thought it was on a regular <laughs> yeah. basis. Oh, God, no. <laughs> What'd you do for your 21st birthday? Got drunk. I had, um, I rented out a teppanyaki spot in oh. Modesto. Fire. Because uh, I grew up in the valley. Can't get by that one. Mm -hmm. um, and I had... Before everybody started doing those like dope uh, fondant cakes, mm -hmm. I had one that was a sushi cake and I did that and we did sake bombs. It and was a cake that looked like sushi yep. or it was a cake made out of sushi? No, it was a cake that looked like sushi. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I did that and then I went out to the club and that's what I did at 21. So you you really wanted people to know you guys are making oh. menu. Yes. Hey, look, look guys, it's I Hello went Kitty. Te it's a sushi cake. <laughs> sushi cake, Hello Kitty chain and like, come on, it was, I was like, yes, I'm this much Chinese and I'm Asian. <laughs> and, the, and the fast and your soundtrack was bumping the yeah, whole night God. and then everybody's <laughs> like no no <laughs> and then everyone's like oh so you're japanese he's like, i said no oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> so sorry so sorry wrong one uh yeah but 21 was just blurry 21 was blurry I mean, actually 21 to like tw to like last year, <laughs> <laughs> to, last year. <laughs> to like last year was real blurry guys i think it was blurry for for most everybody I it feel. should be because you get you feel like i'm supposed to get super drunk at 21 you know what i'm saying you, drink things that are they, blue they just rate oh blue <laughs> speaking <laughs> of which we got the hypnotic, hypnotic on deck and we have not touched it man no. let, let me tell you when i was 21 yeah. i had a little ew. bit when i was 20 ew did you say ew me i don't know the last time i've ever had I, the only time i've had hypnotic was with hennessy oh god bruh that's an incredible hulk first of all hypnotic by itself is tasty is it get some Give me a cup. I, don't, before you I, I got tequila. Okay, here. Wait, is that what smells like fruit? Yes. Oh, oh, is it? Okay. I haven't had hypnotic. Actually, like I said, I've only had hypnotic and Hennessy. Yeah. No, no, no. And my dad gave me 
<laughs> Let me tell you something. That is, uh, it, it, if you don't pour uh, Incredible Hulk right, it is gross. It was pretty good. It was pretty or good. Or it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Well, Hypnotic by itself is, is pleasant. Okay, let actually. me see. Um, and when I was 21, not knowing what the fuck to drink. That is pretty. Um, I would go order an Incredible Hulk, like just a dummy, or I would get a... a adios motherfucker uh, adios oh that is oh that's a stomach ache because <laughs> it's so sweet oh you mm. how does your dick look today i guarantee you it could look better if you get some mac weldon draws let me tell you something i got some on right now they are comfortable they look sexy nice designs and they got this little thing that makes your junk look real good it like it like it, it just my package looks real good in these mac weldon underwears and i feel like you guys aren't hip to it because here's the thing mac weldon believes in smart design premium fabrics and simple shopping i've been on the website and it really is easy to navigate mac weldon will be the most comfortable underwear socks shirts undershirts hoodies and sweatpants and more that you will ever wear okay they have a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial which means they eliminate odor which is good for a lot of y'all because i know you some of you guys you got some musty ass balls you don't take care of your balls but with the mac weldon antimicrobial underwear you don't have to worry about it as much all right And just for everybody out there who needs these in your life, I got a special offer for you, okay? 20% off your first order. Visit MacWeldon.com and enter promo code NOCHASER. That's all you got to do, bruh. MacWeldon.com, enter promo code NOCHASER, and you get 20% off your first order. Do it, bitch. But wait, hey, 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 for real, let me ask you something. Do you experience stress or have anxiety or chronic pain or have trouble sleeping at least once a week? Well, you are not alone. You are not alone. Many of us do. You know what I'm saying? Even when I'm really tired sometimes, I'll come home and I'll be laying in bed and all I can do is just think about shit I have to do or things I got going on or things I want to work on. And sometimes it's a little difficult to fall asleep. Well, check it out, you guys. I got you, okay? Because what you need is some feels, my guy. What is feels? Feels is premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. What does feels do, you might ask? Feels naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness, okay? And we all know you need sleep to function throughout the day and to look sexy. My wife is beautiful, and that's because she sleeps like 15 hours a day. It's crazy. It don't make sense. All right. It's easy to take. Place a few drops of feels under your tongue and feel the difference within minutes. Okay. They got real human support. If you're new to CBD, feels offers a free CBD hotline and text message support to help guide your personal experience to help you feel better naturally. All right. There's no high hangover or addiction. And with the membership, you join the feels community to get feels delivered to your door every month. You'll save money on every order and you can pause or cancel anytime. And if you're interested, check this out. I got a special deal for all y'all. Feels has me feeling my very best every day and it can help you too. So become a member today by going to feels.com slash no chaser and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. Okay. That is F E A L S dot com slash no chaser become a member and get 50 percent automatically taken off your first order with free shipping that is feels.com back in the day i like to mix a little hypnotic with some um squirt Ooh, that would be ooh, oh, that would be really it good. was great rick if you drank you would fuck oh, with that. yeah because this is that. this tastes almost syrupy yeah. It's uh, very, very sweet. I would need something to dilute it with. Because remember, back in the day, it's like we only drank what we heard them talk about Mad in dog. the rap songs. Rap, Mad Dog, what is that? You, a, a beer. Mad Dog 2020? You never had Mad Dog? You What's find that? that mostly in back pockets. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the bottle and it's like Boone's Farm and all oh. that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've you've you, seen probably. and you have You got to go to the liquor before. store. It's on the bottom shelf. It's next to the plastic pop-off. Oh, God, the pop-off. Oh, I know about. man. <laughs> Whoo, rubbing alcohol pop off is probably man look can't do that when you're a youngin you drink whatever the fuck they put in front What's of you whatever right? is available yeah and and pop off was the shit that if i was to base <laughs> drinking on my first experience yeah. of alcohol which was pop off mm. i probably would just never drink 
Um, but you were a trooper. But I was a trooper. <laughs> I, I I waited until I actually had money to buy decent alcohol. Really? Nah. I remember my volleyball coach in college gave me a Target gift card, and a couple of the other girls got Target gift cards, and they sold alcohol at Target. They had like the the wine, and we could not drink wine because we didn't have that palate yet. We would get like the flavored one, and then mix it with all types of stuff. Ugh. Thank you to my volleyball coach because you got us all real drunk that year. God. Well, mm-hmm. hey, well, look, man, look, look. Speaking of hypnotic. <laughs> speaking of speaking of the the golden age of the hip hop that we grew up on, oh. we got a we got a special guest in the building building Bilgin. building who has transcended uh, hip hop and has moved on to so many other things. Uh, still making money, making moves, uh, make some noise. From formerly of the band Pretty Ricky, spectacular. <laughs> Come on What's in. What's up, dog? Yo, yo. How are you? Let me go around the table. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wave. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll <laughs> I don't want to make you reach over everything. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Y'all still, uh, like, Pretty Ricky is still going strong, though, right? Yeah, yeah. We just got on off the second highest grossing tour of the year. Millennium Tour. Yeah, Millennium Tour. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, I'm I'm so mad I, I I didn't go on the first run. Like yeah. I was I was hyped for that shit. Yeah. Well, we're doing the second one. It's going out in February. So the end of February, we do a millennial tour 2020. Ah. So we coming to take over the world a second time. Man, that's exciting, bro. With no Rasby mucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, Rasby. <laughs> Rasby, if you ever want to come on the No Chase podcast, let me know, dog. All right, well, uh, what's up, bro? Welcome to the the podcast. Uh, thank you for coming through. Um, all love, all love. We met on some random shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was a, uh, I, I, I did a video with this uh, millionaire motivational speaker. Uh, this guy named Dan Locke, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and then Dan Locke was in L.A. and he was like, yo, I'm having a little thing at the Magic Castle in Hollywood if you want to come watch some magic. I was like, sure. Yeah, I pulled up. Magic Castle's real strict with the dress code. You got to wear like a suit and tie and you know what I'm saying? It's a whole thing. You go to dinner and then you watch some magic, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, I got there. He was like, oh, he introduced me. He was like, uh, introduced me to this, this dude. I didn't know who he was. He was like, he's like, spec. Nice to meet you. I was like, spec. I was like, spectacular. I was, like, the name. I, know, I, know these I was like, not. <laughs> I was like, Spe- you not spectacular, pretty Ricky spectacular. He was like, yeah, that's me. I was like, what? <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> yeah. That was. I was like, how? How are you? First of all, why were you there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Dan Locke, he's he's someone who's you know killing it right now, and he's just one of my my friends that we were building a relationship with, and he was having this. This for the influencers, one event where he basically helped influencers scale up their their programs because I released the academy um, because I just feel like the school systems and everything right now with the way the schools are right now is, is teaching people how to be the best employee they can yeah. be mm. versus having a skill set where you can build your own wealth and be able to build your own empire to pass it down and create generational wealth. So once I realized that, I started creating my academy and I seen him doing the same thing, Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Locke, and he invited me out. I was like, listen, this is to help you scale that because he's already scaling his. Um, And I was just like, you know what? Uh, Let me come out. Let me support. And yeah, we he did the dinner afterwards. Mm-hmm. He did like a two day event, and yeah, it was it was pretty powerful. He's he's dope at what he does. Um, tell me more about this academy, bro. What's this about? Yeah, so like I said, throughout my whole childhood of high school and middle school, like I learned nothing. I'm pretty sure it's probably the same thing. For I don't y'all. remember shit. Right, right. Cool. They they don't teach you anything that you can possibly go and learn and implement into the real world right. once you get out of school. If anything, they train you to memorize shit for a week, regurgitate it out, exactly. and you forget yeah. it. Yeah. Johnny Appleseed and then yeah. Christopher yeah. Columbus and the president of the United States. Like, I don't care about none of that. None of that is going to help me. Teach me my credit, you know, mm-hmm. how to build my credit. Teach that. me how to do my taxes. Mm-hmm. Teach me how to deal with people, leadership. Mm-hmm. Teach me things that's going to actually help me take my self to the next level. Mm. Yeah. Teach me uh, different skill sets that you can actually take anything that you touch and make it turn into gold so that's when i realized that after i was in a position to make it happen a lot of people just talk 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 i'm not like i'm not a talker like i stay quiet i do my thing and and when you see it you see it yeah and when you see it it's gonna be right so 
once I understood that, I started putting myself in position to have everything that I felt like an entrepreneur MBA should be like. Mm -hmm. I implemented it into my own program. I made my own entrepreneur MBA and I created my own online school and I'm mm. teaching a way that I feel like the school should be teaching. So I had all my millionaire colleagues, you know, guys who's doing seven, eight, nine figures in their business all to come and teach in my school. Mm. So if you made millions off of credit, I, I had you teach credit mm. in my program. If you made millions off of sales, I had you come teach sales in my program. If you know how to deal with different personality types and actually help people people deal with people better leadership you know you're dealing you have over 2,000 agents in your business teach my students how to do that for themselves so they can create their own business to scale it up and take it from that six figures to seven figures or if you don't have any business at all we have a part where it's called business in a box where we teach you all the way from mindset you know personal purging where you actually purge the things that have negative impact in your life and things that's bringing you back because people want to start businesses and they feel like damn this is not working but in reality it's the people they have around them it's the things that that's drawing that negativity to them mm-hmm. and we teach them to purge and it's a bunch of stuff but it's a whole curriculum it's is basically eight week curriculum that's dope and we teach you know, everything marketing branding sales leadership man anything you can name that's so good because i always talk about how like once you get into the real world yeah, right yeah. it's so much shit that yeah. no one taught you that you just expected to either know or figure out the like deep, the deepest they went was teaching you how to balance a check that was it that's it that was it <laughs> yeah. and th- and you don't even use that anymore because everything's yeah. on the uh, bank of america app anyway yeah, exactly right? it's like when i got older I fucked my credit up on accident. I didn't even know how. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't realize what certain things was doing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I opened up a Macy's credit card because it was like, you want to open it? I was like, sure, right? Mm-hmm. And then I had, think I had like $3 left on the card that I wasn't paying off. And then I kept getting like notifications and, and letters about it. I was like, it's three dollars. Who cares, right? Yeah. Not knowing that every time I didn't See? pay, it was fucking my credit up. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, and what's crazy, I just paid off my car. So I just paid off my car. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to not have that payment anymore because yeah. I got rid of a job. But I knew because I've been doing my own research is that once it's paid off, my credit is going to drop. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I got hit 12 points. And I could tell you if I didn't know that I was already preparing for it, I could only imagine being like, why? Yeah. No, nah, I was definitely one of those. I paid off a credit card and closed it. I was oh. like, let me do that. And I was like. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I exactly. had I had good credit before I did that. Right. I, thought, I thought paying it off was going. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, crazy. Yeah. And then you talk to people older than you that are learning with you about yeah. things like credit and balance transfers and just all these different things. And now you got people online mm. telling you how you can have sixty credit cards, you could drop the world, and this exactly. is how you manage benefits. Yeah, I'm like what? But they, but you know what's crazy about that? These, this topic we're talking about, literally, all they had to do is take an hour worth of their time out of the whole year mm. or out of the whole 12 years mm-hmm. of going, uh, of, of schooling or however long you go to school and teach an hour worth of this in just an hour. Because my modules for this is literally probably like, I would say 45 minutes to an hour mm. and you'll walk away with $40,000 worth of credit. Mm-hmm. Lines of credit, not only to start your business, personal credit, they teach you how to uh, do do manipulate basically points to make sure you can even pay. F- so you don't even have to pay for your own mortgage. Right. You don't have to pay for, you know, gas, like the, the regular things that you pay for. We teach you how to like not even worry about that. And then the people who don't have uh, the money up front. We actually have financing for them. Mm. So you don't even have to worry about it. We could approve you up to $10,000 in financing. Oh, and by the time you get to our first, our second module for the, with the credit, you pretty much pay for it within just the credit modules within itself. I have over 864 students right now. That's tight. You know, and, and we're only, we're not even halfway through the year. Like we're only like six months in. Before we go too deep in it, what's the name of this? It's called Spectacular Academy. Hey man, you know what's nice is coming home to a nice home home cooked meal and here's the thing i know a lot of y'all can't cook out there you know my wife just started learning how to cook but you know what she's nice with it though she's nice with the hello fresh recipes okay and i'm not even bullshitting you right now i came home from a long day of shooting ready to order some food and she was like 
nah, I got the healthy homemade dinner for you. We got the HelloFresh. And I was like, oh shit, it smells amazing in here. HelloFresh recipes are so delicious. All right, break out of your dinner rut with HelloFresh's 22 plus seasonal chef curated recipes each week. Not gonna lie, they are fire for real, for real. There's something for everyone, including low calorie, vegetarian and family friendly recipes every week. Okay, HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit. So you know you'll get something delicious. Man, one time she made these like these little like uh, uh chicken tacos and they make these little sauces they come with these sauces you can make too it was like a it was like a a sour cream with some little spicy stuff you add fire fire all right you save time and stress effortlessly okay hellofresh cuts out stressful meal planning and prepping so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes or even 20 minutes with their quick recipe options okay the average trip to the grocery store takes 41 minutes that's a long ass time that's over 34 hours a year if you go once a week shit who got time for that and just so you know hellofresh is now from 566 per serving five dollars and 66 per serving bruh that is a deal. And guess what? I got a special deal for all you people right now. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NoChaser10 and use code NoChaser10 during HelloFresh's New Year's sale for 10 free meals, including free shipping, all right? That is HelloFresh.com slash NoChaser10 and use code NoChaser10 during the sale and you get 10 free meals. That's 10 free meals, okay? Including free shipping, are you dumb? Do it. So how does one go from uh, Grind On Me being one of the biggest uh, like hip hop boy bands in the game to uh, here's an academy to learn how to build your credit? You know what I'm saying? How, how did that happen? Yeah, it, it really all started from me actually being on tour in 2009 mm-hmm. and realizing that I could make money off of social media. Like mm-hmm. I've always been a hustler since day one. I was in sixth grade, you know, selling candy same. $2,000 a week. And I had 10 people working for me. I mean, I wasn't so, making $2,000. Yeah. <laughs> not the same. <laughs> not the same. <laughs> what, <laughs> what kind of candy was like, this? What? You had 10 employees? <laughs> it's yeah. candy cover crack. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say there's some dope ass m and Yeah, damn. But yeah, so, uh, so ever since then, I was always an entrepreneur at heart. Like I always see my mama hustling. I see my dad hustling. Uh, my dad had his own store. My mom was selling Avon crystals. So I was always seeing my my parents always hustling. So I felt like I that rubbed off on me. I don't know. I don't know if it's a genetic thing. I don't really know. But even on tour and on the road, I, my first love was always business. Yeah. Right. And it's messed up. I went to school and the only thing I learned in business is how to type, but I ain't going to go there. Um, (laughs) But when I actually was on tour, I got a call from a guy named Matty J saying, hey, I can make some money off of tweeting. It was a company called My Likes. So at the time I was just figuring out a way I can grow a massive following as quick as possible. And what I realized was. I can take the identity of these different celebrities. So Cat William, Will Ferrell, Kevin Hart, whoever was hot at the time. And I can create parody accounts Mm. with their pages. And once I did that, the pages was growing exponentially fast. Like it was, it was going crazy. Like Mm. it was just like, I'll have a a thousand followers and a week later I have 20,000 followers and instead started growing, growing. So I was like, all right, cool. Because I was a celebrity at the time, but my brain could only go so fast, right? Nobody wants to follow 20 spectacular pages. (laughs) So I had to basically horizontally scale the business. And once I did that, I started monetizing, selling ads against traffic uh, with my likes, the platform. So I became top five in advertising dollars on the whole platform. It was over a hundred million users at the time. And from that, I I realized that, damn, I'm making pretty much shit, thousands of thousands of dollars every single day. Yeah. And I was like, well, how can I do this for other people? I was doing it for myself for parody accounts, mm. uh, created the Grumpy Cat and made that go viral. Oh, wow. yeah. you made that? Yeah, I made Grumpy Cat. And oh, was, wow. So now it's- uh, Rest in peace. Rest oh, in yeah. peace. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace. <laughs> one of the, the number one, well, it's the most famous animal on the planet. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. $100 million net worth. So for, from that, I actually transitioned from that saying like, all right, it took me several years to gain 6 million followers. And I'm making thousands a day off of it. How can I not only scale that up even more, but even on top of that, 
how can I help other individuals? So I was like, well, shit, you got guys with five million followers, six million followers, eight million followers already. They don't know what the hell they doing. So mm-hmm. I started going to these celebrities and I was like, well, listen, you have all these followers. I know how to monetize. Let me help you. You've been putting in all this work for all these years. You had a hit since 2004. <laughs> like your flat, your bank account flatline. Like, how can I help you? Do what I know how to do and let me go ahead and take it to the next level. And once I realized that, I started having these guys make $20,000 a a month, $60,000 a month. Guy named Mighty Duck. He was 21 years old at the time. Oh, official Mighty Duck. Yeah. 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 Mighty Duck. He he cracked $400,000 with me, Mm. you know, in a year. Like, so all these guys, Jay Holiday, $20,000 a month. Like, you know, guys who haven't had a hit in a while, now they have residual based on the efforts that they put in a decade ago. Right. Mm. And then it got deeper. I was like, all right, cool. I'll make somebody a bunch of money. And they'll be like, all right, cool. You know, I grew your followers, right? Not only I started with Mighty Duck when he had like a million followers. Mm. I grew his page to like 7 million Mm. within like a few years. The first year we grew up at 5 million. So I started growing all these celebrity accounts and we got up to like 79 million on all their accounts. We did 7 billion video views, 300 billion impressions. And then they'll just, you know, be really ungrateful. You know, I make them, you know, 200,000, quarter million dollars. Some guys, I was just talking to, uh, you know, I'm going to just say Akon. I was talking to Akon brother and we was talking, uh, I had $150,000 for him up front. You know, because a lot of times people are like, oh, you spec from Pretty Ricky. Like, like nobody taking me serious. Like, so I had to come with the bag in my hand. Like, yo, I got 150,000. He didn't go with me. He went, he went with the white man with the button up, Mm. you know, with the tie on. And he didn't go with me. And then... He got robbed, you know, the, mm-hmm. the company went out of business. They took his money. And then I was just like, you know what? Spec was over here the whole time. I ain't even come empty handed. Yeah. I gave, I had a hundred thousand for this guy. One person I, I tried to give a hundred and think what? 75,000 up front. He mm-hmm. told me my money wasn't good enough. He what? To, yeah. He told me it wasn't enough. It's good over here. Dog. Yeah. Oh, I mean, <laughs> he, he, to, he told me. I'm hearing was, a lot of numbers. I was like, all right, so we got how much time I got. To- <laughs> Yeah, so he told me that the money wasn't even enough money. Like, he was feeling himself. And now, literally, I seen him at the Revolt Summit. He's like, oh, Spec, we got to sit down. We got to, oh, now no, we got to No, Diddy. Sit. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, Diddy. Nah, nah, it wasn't nah. Diddy. It wasn't Diddy. One diddy. <laughs> it wasn't Diddy. But it was, it was, it was somebody, you know, yeah. on that caliber. Yeah, but now they want to sit no down. No rasp beat. No. <laughs> but yeah, so, long story short, I realized that I could help more individuals. I was like, why am I helping people who already don't need to help like they need to help but they don't need to help i can help more individuals who have a brand Mm -hmm. who have you know a product that's amazing but they don't know how to get to the masses Mm -hmm. they don't know how to brand themselves they don't know how to do marketing they don't know how to build a sales team they don't know how to close a deal for a hundred thousand dollars on a one call close they don't know none of this stuff and i understand this Mm -hmm. so as my company was accelerating and we made one of the fastest growing companies in america with a list called the Inc. 5000, we ranked number 262 mm-hmm. with 1,600% growth in the last three years. And I was like, what the hell is that? So there was like out of 18 million, 18 million registered companies, they put together the top 5,000 growing companies mm-hmm. and I ranked 262 on the really? list. So once I did that, I was just like, all right, I literally went crazy. Like my, my company just went crazy. And then Facebook changed one thing. Boom. Mm. Almost took me out of business. Word. What's that? It, they, they, they did an algorithm change. They realized how much money we was, we was making selling ads against the, the traffic. Yeah. And they wanted a piece of it. They was like, oh, y'all making all this money off of us and we not getting a piece of it. Mm. So they try to figure out a way to cut, not try to figure out, they figured out a way to cut our water off. But I seen that like in business, you got to be a visionary. You got to understand what's coming five years, two years, three years ahead. And I knew this was happening. So I started transitioning myself and pivoting in my company because I knew that this day, doomsday was coming. Mm. So some of my competitors making 45 million a year went out of business. A lot of them just like went flatline. Mm. But I seen it coming. So when the change made, my revenue dropped by 80 percent overnight. Mm -hmm. But I was I was preparing. If you if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. So when it happened, I made the transition. But. I started reading over hundreds of books. I started doing, I started listening to podcasts. I started, you know, hiring consultants, mentorship. I started doing everything I could possibly buy them program, like online courses, everything possible to try to make that transition. Because even though I was prepared, I needed to try to like 
sustain that hit because yeah. I have, you know, at that time, I think I had over 25 employees mm -hmm. and I just, too many people was depending on me, yeah. but I didn't have anything like this, like my program, my yeah. entrepreneur MBA program. And by the way, if you guys want to go to my free training, you can go to help me go viral dot com mm -hmm. uh, and then it'll take you straight. That's free. Um, and I didn't have anything like that. It breaks all this stuff down. I had to go and find a coach for sales, learn how to do sales. I had to go take a training for personality, selling through personality. Because the mm -hmm. same way I was selling you is different than, than I was sell to her. Right. It's different personality types in the way that you present mm -hmm. your sales pitch to them. And then marketing, branding, like people don't know how to grow 100,000 followers in 30 days. Mm -hmm. I can blow up a plant. <laughs> I could blow up a cat Grumpy Grumpy ficus <laughs> You know what I'm saying I, I can do whatever So I know it's a formula That I can use That I can teach others To do the same for themselves So same way Like Elon Musk Everything he touched Turned into gold PayPal He <laughs> Uh, uh, Tesla, right. freaking SpaceX, whatever. He has a formula yeah. in the same way in business. It's a formula. So now I basically put this curriculum together that is going to teach you all the necessary things you need to scale your business. So if I would have had this when I went like 80% drop, yeah. I would I wouldn't have had no pressures. I, yeah. I didn't know what to do. I got my coach spec coaching me. I got his team coaching me like I'm good, but I didn't have that. Yeah. So I was like, how can I position myself in a way where I can help more people who's going to go through what I'm going through mm -hmm. or somebody who can prepare themselves. So if they ever go through that, they at least have the tools necessary yeah. to sustain that hit. That's, that's crazy because I feel like so many people. They might hear about Pretty Ricky and Spectacular and they're going to be like, oh, you know, like you said, they ain't had a hit since whatever. Like he probably they doing the tour because they need money from whatever, whatever. And they would have no idea that you run in these like I don't know, million dollar businesses. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and so it's like, um, what made you even like why even want to do the tour? You know what I'm saying? I feel like you're so busy with everything else. You know what? The tour is is a situation for me where it's like do i do it like because it ain't the money like right. the money like i mean the money i make in a tour like i can make in a month you right. know for one of my businesses i have 14 but at the same time for me it's about my brothers mm -hmm. you know i know this is a love for them i know this is something that that they cherish and and even for me like performing on stage is really powerful for me but after a while the third fourth show becomes a job yeah you know it yeah. goes from fun to like i gotta continuously go and do the same show mm -hmm. you know i gotta entertain i gotta you know it's like my alter ego on stage people see me perform on stage and it's like yo this ain't the same spec i just uh, heard on that podcast right. <laughs> like i gotta get freaky nasty i'm between yeah, yeah, yeah. legs i'm stroking i'm <laughs> back flipping i'm pumping lick right. lipping yeah all all that. We, <laughs> can't even say it. Yeah. Lick, lick, lick. <laughs> so one of the first concerts I went to was your guys' concert. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. All right. Ooh, switch the I'm conversation. Like, yeah. What, what was, you throw on stage? Yeah. I didn't throw nothing. I was up high. We couldn't afford to be down there. I was up real high. I was like, woo. I, oh, I'm not supposed to be singing at this. I had went with my friend, uh, one of my friends, Monica. She had taken me mm -hmm. and we went. It was out in San Jose. So I grew up super, super, super small town. So going to San Jose was like huge. It was at the SAP Center. And I remember. And yeah, I shouldn't have been watching your videos. I shouldn't have been <laughs> listening to none of your music. There was no reason. But let me tell you, when we got to college, who was it that was doing all the grinding videos? There was literally like a trio of dudes that would go and do all the grinding videos. And it was Jay like. Jay Smooth. Jay Smooth. There we go. That is the name. Jay Smooth. All the mm -hmm. Jay Smooth videos. You guys don't know? Nah. No, I, I, Those I videos seen, I didn't were like. his name. But yes. Yeah. Jay I did Smooth. A, I did a. a I basically recruit I started something called the Grind Squad. Okay. And I basically recruited him and we did videos together. Like it was grinding. And, no, it was literally like You gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. Was, we gotta put this thing up. We got one on poor on quality, poor quality cameras, uh baggy sweats, yep. uh hats, do rags, and a lot of hiding of the face. And, and, and a lot of he didn't do the baggy sweats. He didn't. <laughs> well, let me tell you, when you, I wasn't gonna when, when you did the uh the tipsy challenge, yeah, I did a video uh in response to it yeah. uh <laughs> then it go viral nah no, i'm not my I video think, i think my video is the first viral video i was going to say that I, yeah but, you were but definitely is, one of the first to utilize and that. you know it's crazy because people don't know like people some people laugh some people say a lot of things about the video but i made a lot of money off that video and now and now was and now was the goal of the video i was literally home i was like yo what's gonna make everybody <laughs> go nuts now i had it literally i had <laughs> I was like, 
said literally. <laughs> so I hadn't seen, mind you, like the Jace moves was every, I just She's remember. Like, oh yeah. my yeah. God. Jay, for us, again, it was practicing the dance moves and you wanted to roll. And that was like the epitome of sexy. I just always thought that the Jace move videos were yeah. always so sexy. And then I hadn't seen your video till today. We had we had to put her on. We had to let her know. And I, when you walked back, I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> somebody had walked through the door and I pushed my phone down. And I, I thought it was you. It. I was like, I feel like I'm not supposed to be watching this right now. We but need I, to bring Speedos back for men in 2020. Wait, but, but you know what the part about it was, is that after we seen it, the damn song was stuck in my head. It I was true. body rolling mm-hmm. throughout the whole time. And I was like, what are we doing today? <laughs> and your whole point was it was gonna stick yeah that yeah. shit was gonna have everybody talking and mm-hmm. it was one of those things that the song was stuck in my head i was like why not blue why you wear red why your hair like now i'm <laughs> asking you, questions it's psychology, now, it's now psychology. Now yeah but everybody don't know like what it takes to put a viral video out. it's like all right cool what what would make people talk i say all right i gotta call people i gotta challenge them i gotta say this ain't no beef that's gonna get them to talk i gotta put some i gotta put if i put some sweats or some some it's normal then it's it gonna be a then shock it, factor then it would have been right. jay smooth look at us right. look at the conversation they have right. no idea wow. who jay smooth is exactly but- they, they know about the video. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, cool. What's going to be a shock factor? I can't wear pants. I got to wear on Did some Did you just speedos. have those? Like, did you? <laughs> no, nah, I literally went to the store for those. Oh, yeah, God. I went to the store. And my girl went and picked them out. She was like, these going to make them go crazy. All right. Like, all right, cool. Let me grab those. I was like, you think so? I was like, all right. And I'm going to just, I said, I'm going to act like I'm tipsy as hell. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. It went viral. So it I did mean, go viral. Yeah, we went, on, we went on the tour, but it was more of... It was more on monetizing my traffic at the time. And at that time, like when that when that video hit, I made so much money, like just off traffic that was coming to my page. Yeah. It, when you go viral, everybody like literally every like it looked like a chat room on your timeline mm. when you go viral. And yeah, you, it's crazy. It was good though. What would you say is the uh I don't know, what's a crazy thing that happened on uh tour with the with the pretty Ricky uh boys? <laughs> Everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bet. I could only imagine. I bet. I mean, because back in the day, I feel like that was really, you know, I mean, yeah, nowadays, like, you know, boy bands and boy, like, and like groups are, are, are kind of, I feel like they're coming back now. But I mean, back then, it was really, really mm-hmm. at the height of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, not only like NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, but also like, you know, like immature. the Immature oh, and God. Pretty Ricky yeah. B2K. Like, the shit was really popping back. Prize and I, everybody you know? had babies during that time. That's all you guys were putting out was baby making music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they may have been the tops in getting women because. Of the sexual nature of the music, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Y- y'all probably had girls just in the hotel room, and you don't know how they got in there. Men, <laughs> men, men talking about pleasing women and mm-hmm. putting the women first was not what we were hearing. So right. for everybody, it was like, oh my god, they gonna do what? Yeah. <laughs> and then your guys' yeah. music videos. See, for me, it's maybe like maybe a fangirl mer- moment of like going back to remembering what it was like when a video would come out, and then you had all the songs, and it was. Mm-hmm. I wasn't in the club yet, so I was still like, that's I wasn't, all you were seeing. I wasn't out. Mm-hmm. Whatever was on uh, BET Uncut, or whatever I yes. could get access to, that's what it felt like. It was almost like naughty to watch this video. <laughs> Hashtag naughty Nikki. Naughty, naughty Nikki. Nikki. It was honestly for us, I feel like they wrote so many articles on us saying we did make the baby rate go up by like 80%. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, they tried hilarious. to they tried to ban us from certain countries because we was it was real sexual and things like that and and like when you go to those conservative countries yeah when you we we wild on stage talking about you know who gonna eat the pussy like let's eat the pussy like when you starting to say things like that they start looking like yo we can't have them here and we was we was just wild like r&b and w yeah we (laughs) yeah yeah we we was wild Uh, like the the girls it sex was a sport back then Mm. You know, we was doing it just to see how good we can get. Right, right. Because it was just whoever you wanted. It was once you have sexual music. And then I had an interview and it was uh, a girl named Shan, Shan Butrin. Boutre- oh, oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And, and she was like, how many girls masturbated to you? <laughs> And then never that never even made me even think about like yeah. women probably. Wow. I never even thought about that. And yeah. I, when she said it to me, I was like, oh. I was like, man, ain't no girl masturbating to me. Like, I kind of like was like, mm. and then I literally 
ran into somebody at a party and she walked up to me the first thing she said she said I used to masturbate <laughs> And I was like, whoa, so it's true. Shannon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one, we have one. Guess yeah. what? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she was like, uh, yeah, and there's millions of others. And I was just like, wow. So it like just, um, I guess the whole sex appeal and the music and like the, like you're saying, the dancing and the hip rolling and all that, like that whole combination. I feel like it just takes women mind to different places that the fellas get to capitalize off. I mean, it was it was different back then, you know what I'm saying? Like I mean, now it's a lot of people talking about fucking in some R&B yeah. songs. Back then it was like Actually. I mean, but not it's not the same impact. Right, I mean, especially back then because I mean, look, if you even look at the 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 heavy R&B groups back then, I mean like or the early ones, Boyz II Men, the most they said was I'm gonna make love to you. Oh, but yeah. you wanted to get married to Boyz II Men, but right. you was cheating on somebody. <laughs> Listen to <laughs> <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> <you're saying. laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, I remember the towel. We'll see, like the lighting in your videos were nice. You guys had really nice lighting in your music video. Nikki was one of the ones diddling in her room yeah. to some pretty rigging. Not videos. you. She I, quiet no, about it. I was like, time. I was like this. I had right? said, I had said, it before. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm gonna play cool, but <laughs> I was like, there has been a lot of uh, practice baby making done to your music. Mm-hmm. Not solo, but I definitely was like, oh yeah, babe, you you see the new video? Oh, the solo thing was good too. I was too uh, for me at that time frame. That wasn't that wasn't kind of what it was taking it to. I was in a relationship, and mm-hmm. you. I mean, a lot of the guys that I were with were very much into your music as well. So when you're yeah. with a man who is very comfortable in themselves, and they are comfortable in their sexuality, and they are about doing everything in the song, it's more like, oh, that's her favorite song. What part was your favorite part? Mm-hmm. So you want me to listen and do yes mm-hmm. that part. So it's like it was almost like a manual you guys were putting out. It really out. was. You know, you know, somebody else told me during my last tour, it was a videographer there. He was like, man. He was like, y'all made it cool to eat pussy. (laughs) Hilarious. That's for real. So we was talking about like in high school back then when it wasn't cool. If you ask a guy back then they eat they ate pussy, they was just like, who like stop playing with me? I don't eat no like yeah. I mean I was always a fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that but that's just crazy because I, I never thought about that either. So I I was just living my life. So as these things was happening and people talking about masturbating to me and making it cool to eat pussy, that's just who we was, right? right. So my dad didn't let us go out like that. We was kind of like because we just used to get in trouble every time we left we was fighting hitting people across the head with bats and like fight like all type of craziness so we had to stay in the house (laughs) so the only thing he let us do was bring girls like we have our girlfriends stay over our girl with s girlfriends stay (laughs) over and and like that's all he cared about was like stay home bring your girls here and that's it so like that's all we knew it was Y'all better be fucking. <laughs> use condoms. Nothing else. No, that's, be- no, that's what you say. You better be using condoms. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah, my parents told me the same shit. It was like, uh, I mean, because I was never out there doing nothing crazy. I just always just had girls at the house. You know, just don't get no one pregnant. He's yeah. soft. You better at least be fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Guys have such a different childhood than girls. Your, your mom and dad are never going to be like, hey, just use protection. What the fuck? No, my dad locked me up. Took away the key and I had to sneak around, and that's why you need you to got get pregnant. Yeah. No. <laughs> I did not, Tim. Don't start that rumor. You know the internet is crazy. Never uh, happened. Where, where, where are you from? I'm from Miami. Oh, you're from Miami. Is that where all the boys are from? Yeah. Word. Okay. And how did the group come about? Y'all, is that like an organic thing or were y'all put together or like how'd that yeah, go? We all family. Oh, word. Yeah. Okay. Like legit? Cousins, yeah. brothers? Brothers. Oh. Oh, huh. shit. Didn't know that. Well, wow, I did not know that. You learn something new every day. Learn <laughs> something. How did the music making process go for you guys? Mm-hmm. Like you got all your brothers in a room and we're like, hey, let's all talk about uh, what we've been doing tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was always just a vibe, like just because it was second nature to us. And at that time, we might have just finished doing whatever. Like we was like, it was wild. It was wild. <laughs> it was like even in the booth, it might have been like every we was just like, wow, we was just living our life back then. We had no care. My father wasn't strict like that when it came to girls and everything. So that was like second nature to us. So when it came to putting the music on, we already knew what the theme was and we just vibed to it. It wasn't no no craziness it's crazy how you know i didn't realize how um the groupy part of life really kind of uh it it, it 
it, it happens real like easy. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't realize it until like, like the first time I did ever did like a performance in high school. Even it was mm. like putting on the hits my senior year. I rapped some shit, and then as soon as I got off stage, this was like junior senior year of high school. A homegirl of mine was yeah. like. I want to fuck you so bad right now. Yeah. I was like, "This is this what happens? Bruh, you exhibit a talent, <laughs> and right. that's it. I would walk into the club as, who's this fat dude? And walk out with some ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you can dance or some shit like right, that. Right, right, right. I think it's the the adrenaline or like the, the excitement. You know, mm. I think people love excitement, especially women. Women love excitement. So if you can incite them and make them feel like damn like women love talent too so. i was just gonna say talent is attractive because yeah. what comes with it is confidence yeah and what it's comes a, with yeah. confidence is security yes and what most women are thinking about is oh he, um hmm. you yeah. see him on stage and mm-hmm. women do that too women do it a lot when you think you were gonna pick her oh no 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 oh, pick you she let you yes mm-hmm. she already had her eye contact she gave yes. you enough looks for you to glance in her oh yeah and, I, it, and yeah. And you guys put yourself in positions to be chosen. And I didn't know this. Oh, so I wardrobe, I, yeah. hair, ma- yes. you got to know what you want to attract when you leave the house. Yes. Mm-hmm. I remember I was um I was talking to this girl one time and she was like, she was like, hey, just, you know, I'm, I'm going to this J. Cole concert. And if he wants to fuck tonight, I, I will be down. Mm-hmm. And I was like, <laughs> look, man, I understand. That's cool with me. But you better not suck no keyboardist security <laughs> dick to get to get to J. Cole. All right. And she was like. I'm gonna. <laughs> you can't stop me if I gotta do that, cause they will do that. But to be honest, look, man, it, it goes the same way. Like, there's definitely been girls who I feel like I might not like right off the bat be like, oh, like this, this, this chick is my speed. But then I see her dance or yeah. even um sing or even be funny or and be like, or be- <laughs> <laughs> maybe not beatbox. He's like, oh, yeah, oh yeah, that might do beatbox <laughs> on With my that, dick. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely feel like I see a girl like do something. <laughs> special even like a stand-up comedian be like she's funny i want to fuck yeah <laughs> La- ladies and gentlemen know that it doesn't even have to be the most craziest thing it's like like you said be funny there's always that one spark and once you see it you're like oh shit wow i didn't even know i liked that or thought that, that was- i didn't even know what what is that so like dancing i always found dancing very attractive like a man that could dance mm-hmm. if you don't got rhythm i'm just like ooh. but you could be really good looking but then it goes the same way there is so quick that's something you could do and just automatically be like, your shots are all gone. Look, on the same token as finding a funny girl attractive, when you have a conversation and a girl is lame, it's like, damn, yeah. uh, I only want to smash yeah, once I'm now. still going to fuck you. <laughs> <but> <laughs> still, <laughs> I'm going to be disgusted time. when yeah. I'm in it. Bro. <laughs> but I'm going to call you a ride immediately uh, after. Look at you. Uber <laughs> outside. <Yeah. laughs> Uber pool, too. <laughs> <laughs> be like, why is it? Why is it? You get in the car. Excuse me. This is my Uber. No, bitch. Shit's pool. Yeah, bitch, yeah. we just left from the same place. You said no yesterday. <laughs> the same place. You didn't like me either. From the front of the house and the back of the house. <laughs> she was sleeping there for three hours hilarious <laughs> so what else you working on man besides uh, the academy and besides the tour like what should we be looking forward to from spectacular I got a few exciting things <clears throat> coming up I think one of the main things that I'm excited about the most is that I'm creating I'm in the process of creating a company called uh, Social Seed Okay. and basically what the company is, well, even let me rewind that back. So I decided to create something that I feel like I can go deeper uh, with the people. And right now, my whole journey is generational wealth. And in order to do that, we have to put position people in position to be able to do the things that they're not able to do without certain things, right? So one of the things is investing. The average person don't know how to invest. Mm-hmm. Like if I ask you right now, a few of you guys probably don't know how the hell you invest in a stock market. You probably confused as hell. I don't know shit. How? Tell me, please. Yeah. So what we're doing is I decided to go and get three other executives. Mm-hmm. You know, one guy had had a hundred, you know, staff company. Another guy makes like 600,000 every two weeks off of e-com sales. Another guy has a $30 million company. And I basically, and of course I have my accolades and, and all my great stuff. And then I basically merged everybody together and got everybody's black. So I got all black executives mm-hmm. and, and we decided to come up with this, this vision that we said, you know what? How could we be able to take an influencer 
and be able to marry the fact that you have a super fan and have the top 1% super fan be able to engage not only with them as a fan, but a, be able to engage with them financially. So when they release something, which we're helping them, the celebrities release a product, the next Kali Cosmetics, you're able to invest as a super fan and not only become a street team person for them, but be a, a, a part of the visuals, you know, mm. the decision making as a micro investor. Interesting. Huh. And uh, all y'all had to like mm, mm, at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that that's really one of my game plans. And so create a program. Uh, where you can actually have a company where it basically matches the celebrity up with a product. Mm -hmm. And once you match the celebrity up with a product, the second step would be to now get your top 1% fans to now engage into the product and now be able to launch that product. And now they're at an accelerator, mm -hmm. which is the seed round of funding for that product. So you automatically got a thousand people to purchase your product. And anybody who buys a product, they're more likely to push that product because they own that product yeah. or they have a equity share in that product. So now they're pushing it to their social media and then we'll do like different things that's going to incentivize them to push it more. We'll have a leaderboard and whoever posts this many times on social media and all that great stuff, then you actually start seeing, you know, people on the leaderboard come up and then they're going to actually push the product even more. So once you do that, then we raise the traditional round of funding. And then after that, you know, we raised, you know, $10 million. We do that with 10 influencers. We have technology involved in it. You 10 X the evaluation with technology involved. You get 10 influencers raise $10 million a piece, billion dollar company. Yeah. Shit. That's, that's super dope. And the reason my head perked up because I've heard things similar to that. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening. And I'm like, but what's going to be different? Cause that's what I always look for. A bunch of people going to tell yeah. you the same idea a billion times. Mm -hmm. Like what's different. Never have I heard letting them invest and become mm -hmm. a part of something. You know, yeah. it's always like, Oh, you can text me directly yeah. <laughs> or some yeah. shit like that. And that's, and you get first dibs on this link and that's as far as it goes. I think yeah. it's really dope. <laughs> yeah. And then go ahead. Oh, no. Uh, I've been looking into more about stocks and the market and all of that. Mm -hmm. So one of the main things that they tell you when investing into stocks is go into brands that you know. Exactly. So when you said that, I was like, same formula. Exactly. You want to go and invest into companies that you're familiar with because why would you invest in a company you don't know anything about? Because right. you're not going to have passion about a product that's going to be pushed. So right. you like me as a company. I want to invest into your company. I'm going to push your company's success because exactly. it equals mine. Ah. Exactly. And and that's why we're aiming for your super fans. Mm -hmm. You know, you already you already indulged into this influencer night and day on social media, like and comment. Now, now you're going to get paid off of it. Mm -hmm. So if you was to see Kali Cosmetics before it popped off and I was able to become an investor at that oh, beginning stage, God. how would you feel right now? Rich. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's that's one of the main things. And, and another problem that's in the market right now is that you have influencers with influence. But what I do is I just pay Tim, promote my shit. And, you know, it's a bad example because he's right here next to me. But, you know, <laughs> let's just say. I'll do it. <laughs> so, so let's just say if we get, you know, whatever, King Batch to promote my shit. Mm -hmm. And then he promotes it. He get a check for it. It might be a nice, healthy check. Right. Boom. He run off. He go invest it, do what he do, whatever. But at the same time. That company now has the residual that's coming from that. They have the compound, you know, interest that's coming from that, from that consumer coming over and they get to upsell them, whatever the hell they want to upsell them. And, and it keeps growing from that point forward. Mm -hmm. They become a lifetime customer and they have that value. But now it came back to say, all right, fuck all y'all. Not taking no more of y'all money. Or I'm going to just take it as my, my little tour money, mm -hmm. right? And then be able to say, this is my bread and butter. Let me have my own product. Mm -hmm. And now let me pay influencers to promote my shit. Right. Mm -hmm. Now I can compound those customers into other products, additional products that I want to release as batch beauty product. Mm -hmm. And now you get it in the stores, Macy's, Walmart's, wherever the hell you put 
beauty products, Sally's, and then all of a sudden you're selling your 51% of your company for $600 million mm-hmm. like Kylie Jenner did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's where it's at. But the problem is the influencers have the in- the influence, but they don't have the infrastructure. They yeah. don't have the mm-hmm. business know-how, the big business acumen. They don't have any of those things that's in place for their business to soar. Mm-hmm. And the people that do try, they don't have the marketing skills to mm-hmm. scale it up to a million dollars a month. My company has the ability to soon as we test the product out it's already doing a hundred thousand before i put your face on it yeah. so once i put your face on it and now i'm targeting your fans and now i'm i'm scaling up your brand all of a sudden it becomes a two million dollar a month product yeah. and now with the investors coming in the micro investors is enabling that influencer not to stress about capital at the beginning phase of launching the business yeah. and then we bring on the traditional investors raise 10 million dollars give them a couple percentages and then we continue continuously scale and then we duplicate that model for each different influencer yeah. that's beautiful man Damn. shark tank all by itself <laughs> man for real <laughs> shit let's let's talk more after this because yeah. uh I'm trying to get down. <laughs> you see, everybody perked up because we was like, all right, so I, I need like, my shit to grow. All right, so uh, let, let me know what all we right. can do so we can stop doing this podcast. <laughs> I was like, I got a day job that I don't want to be at anymore. <laughs> no, I like my job. Sorry. <laughs> if you're listening. I, I was like, I kidding. need health benefits. Leave, <laughs> leave me like, there, please. <laughs> I think I could beat you in the grind off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over. <laughs> off this real topic. <laughs> yeah. I got this new app. It's only grinding, right? <laughs> let me know what I got to do, dog. <laughs> it's called Grinder. What? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, that's taken. That's Damn. <laughs> Y'all got any um new pretty reggae music coming or not? Yeah, yeah, we have a song called Body. Okay, that's, that's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I Will there be any lie. speedos featured in 2020? Red speedos. I think. I, think, I, think I, re- I re- Yeah, I retired the speedos. <laughs> yeah. Because that marketing play is gone. Like everybody done that. caught yeah. on. Everybody's going viral now. It's not yeah. a special thing no more. Grumpy speedos, dog. <laughs> Grumpy cat hey, speedos. Nah, that might be good though. <laughs> that might be good. Hey, that's uh, on camera. You better take your credit hilarious. while you can. That might be good though. Well, shit, Something man, to promote. Where can we? Uh, where can where can people find you if they want to find you? Yeah, so everything is I'm spectacular from Instagram, you know, Twitter, Facebook, trying to get on this whole TikTok, TikTok? thing. Ugh, man, but somebody, one of them damn kids took my name. So uh, <laughs> Spectacular Smith on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> one of them damn kids took my Snapchat name. God uh, damn kids. I, I'm, I am Spectac on Snapchat. But other than that, you can text my number 786-661-1224. If you want the text, if you want to be lazy and want to go to helpmegoviral.com, you can just text me, hashtag course, the 786-661-1224, and it'll automatically send you the link for all all the lazy people out there for sure well thanks for coming through and 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 kicking some knowledge to us bro we appreciate that man um yeah that's it (laughs) (laughs) it's all love man thanks for having me all right y'all uh thanks for listening to the no chaser podcast i'm simply the ghetto i'm ricky shucks and i'm nikki blaze and i'm spectac yes (laughs) i'm smith on tiktok (laughs) i got two s's on mine because somebody took Uh. nikki blades